plays its first of three games in Spain. Newswatch starts right now. Good evening, I'm Max Brunke. And I'm Marie Vanessi. Welcome to Newswatch, your source for news impacting southeastern Ohio. Seven counties in Kentucky are now able to apply for disaster unemployment assistance. Breathe It, Clay, Floyd, Knott, Ledger, Perry, and Pike counties will be eligible as they were heavily affected by severe storms and flooding. Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir says more counties can expect to be added. Simultaneously, the Kentucky National Guard is delivering supplies to hard-hit communities by helicopter. The Guard pilots are able to maneuver in very hard-to-reach places. They have been flying supply missions to Eastern Kentucky seven to eight hours a day since last Thursday. A group of Nelsonville residents are collecting donations for relief as they travel to Eastern Kentucky this weekend. Severe flooding in the area has displaced hundreds of people and emergency service workers are struggling to search and rescue missing people in extreme heat. When Lori Crook and her close friends heard about the disastrous conditions, they decided to collect donations to help out Kentuckians where they could. 11-year-old Brooklyn Pike made a sign for the collection and Nelsonville residents have made an effort to pitch in. Crook said she has received tons of food, toiletries, and even gas money. We live in very, very similar area and we were just picturing this is kind of like Bookdale, Murray City, Gloucester, Nelsonville times 100 all getting wiped out. The families on the news, like you can just imagine those could be your neighbors um, here. So I guess that because it's so close to home and, and a lot of people here have family from there. The group is heading to Kentucky tomorrow morning and plans to cook food for anyone who needs it when they get there. Additionally, Crook says the group hopes to connect with some families so they can help them recover. If anyone else wants to help or donate, contact Lori Crook on Facebook. President Joe Biden is planning on visiting Kentucky Monday. That is if he tests negative for COVID-19. He and the First Lady are supposed to travel to Eastern Kentucky to check out the severe flood damage and recovery efforts there. Their plan is to meet with Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir and his wife and visit families affected by the devastation. President Biden is in his sixth day of re-isolation. Biden's doctor reports the president continues to feel well. And the cough he had this week is just about gone. Forecaster Ethan Levingston joins us with a look at the weather around our area today. Thank you, Maria. Right now, we're looking at a flood watch for most of southeastern Ohio and western, or northern western, west, west, west Virginia. We're looking at showers coming in from the southwest, rising up through the Athens area, along the Ohio River to the northeast. Right now in Athens, we're looking at 82 degrees, mostly cloudy. There were some showers today, but they were sporadic, and there were some isolated thunderstorms as well. But what, but what I really want you to focus on is this heat index, 87 degrees, and that's because of that 71% humidity. It is going to feel a lot hotter and a lot muggier out there. If we look at the radar, Zanesville 81, Parkersburg also 81, Athens 82. But remember, these numbers do not represent how it's going to feel out there. It's going to feel a lot hotter and muggier. You cannot trust these numbers. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Ethan. Authorities in Ohio are investigating a suspected quadruple murder today in Dayton. Butler Township police have confirmed they have found four bodies in two separate homes on the same street. Investigators believe the suspect, 39-year-old Stephen Marlowe, fled the scene in a 2007 White Ford Edge SUV. Police are working to determine if there is any motive for the tragedy or if mental illness may have played a role. The Ohio Supreme Court will be looking for a new Chief Justice after Maureen O'Connor heard her last oral argument. More than 100 current staffers and justices gave O'Connor an ovation as she left the Thomas J. Moyer Judicial Center. O'Connor served in a statewide elected office longer than any woman in Ohio history. She became, and she became the first female Chief Justice in Ohio 12 years ago. The Ohio Constitution says no one can run for judicial office after reaching the age of 70, so O'Connor was blocked from seeking re-election. 
The annual Back to School Bash returns to Nelsonville for the first time since 2019. Newswatch reporter Peyton Simchik has more on the event at the public square. Elementary to high school age kids from all around Athens County fill Washington Street to get what they need for the upcoming school year. Vendors offer different services and activities like the Athens County Public Library's bookmobile and the Vision to Learn truck offering free eye exams. Executive Director of the Athens County Department of Jobs and Family Services, Jean Damoski, says the event expanded this year. So there's lots of community support, lots of people giving uh, donations. Approximately 1,000 children received clothes and shoes customized to their size and chose their own backpack. Stylists and barbers volunteered to give free haircuts to kids. At Stewart's Opera House, kids could get hygiene necessities provided by the Catherine McCoy Resource Project. Founder of the nonprofit Claire Abraham made sure necessary products were available for kids and their families. Laundry detergent was a big thing, so I wanted to make sure that every family left with a bottle of laundry detergent. She says she wants to make sure every kid leaves with what they need for the first day of school. Kids will come from nothing, and they just want something to feel good about themselves in. Reporting for Newswatch, I'm Peyton Simchek in Nelsonville. A man died Wednesday after an apparent accident in Hawking Hills State Park. Hawking County 911 received a call about an unresponsive body seen lying at the bottom of Cliff and Cantwell Cliffs. The Logan Daily reports the body was identified as 35-year-old Jorge Hernandez de Villa of Canal Winchester. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Hernandez de, Hernandez de Villa excuse me, is believed to have been walking off the trail near the main waterfall when he fell somewhere between 80 and 100 feet. The Ohio Department of Natural Resources investigation is ongoing. Gardening and growing your own food is growing in popularity since the pandemic. But for some people, gardening is more than a way to save money. In the Nelsonville Community Garden, volunteers are hard at work planting vegetables for the season. Space here and in other community gardens in Athens County is limited because of a rising interest in gardening. At the Nelsonville Garden, plots are full for the very first time. It's hard to know exactly what the cause is for the increase in gardening interest, but um, we've definitely seen an increase, I think, since 2020. The growing interest in gardening comes as high food prices can put a strain on people's wallets, and the pandemic has had an effect on people's mental health. For some, the answer to relieving both is gardening. People cite interest in gardening for access to food, um, for access to like a green space where they can enjoy nature or for gardening for mental and emotional health. Over at Southside Carriage Hill Community Garden, gardening is helping Giselle Gillard. It wasn't really like a to grow, it was more to get stress off and then I just fell in love with growing. Her love for gardening has continued and it is special for her to experience. We're helping the community, so that's the best thing for me. And it's another way that getting outside can help people. Having access to a garden space where you can be outside and um, relax a little bit and also grow your own food is a is a win-win. If you want to learn more information about community gardens, you can visit communityfoodinitiatives.org. Coming up, a committee in Dayton is choosing a location to honor mass shooting victims, why it's taken so long to finalize the plans. And the Senate is predicted to vote on a major economic package tomorrow. A closer look into how the package will benefit health care, climate change, and taxes. These stories and more when Newswatch returns. On country music, Vietnam divides America. Rednecks, hippies, anti-Vietnam, pro-Vietnam. Bob Dylan meets Johnny Cash. Dylan and Dad together, that was an explosion. And Chris Christopherson comes to Nashville. Chris Christopherson is probably the best songwriter compared to Chris with Gershwin or anybody else. When Country Music Continues. Thursday at 9 on WOUB. Next time on Antiques Roadshow, would the value of this Western painting leave you speechless? It's a classic Western scene. It is a Utah scene, and that makes it somewhat rare. His work is highly coveted and desired. It really is a very special piece. Okay. Find out more next time on Antiques Roadshow from the Hotel Del Coronado in Coronado, California. Monday at 8 on WOUB. This is a story in which everyone is challenged all the time. 
We are challenged as Americans, we're challenged as parents, as children, we're challenged as neighbors and as friends to think about what we would have done, what we could have done, what we should have done. And even though the Holocaust physically took place in Europe, it is a story that Americans have to reckon with too. That's beyond cool. That's epic. On Finding Your Roots, filmmaker Alejandro G. Iñárritu. I always has been curious what make me what I am. Performance artist Marina Abramovich. Okay, this made me very proud. And painter Kehinde Wiley. This is intense. Warriors, soldiers. There is a fighter. Powerful ancestors. It's like being descended from royalty. Wow. Finding Your Roots. Tuesday at 8 on WOUB. An Ohio committee in Dayton is working to finalize the location for a mass shooting memorial. The Oregon District mass shooting took nine lives in 2019. Committee co-chair Sandy Gadurf says the pandemic has slowed the memorial process. She said they want to take their time in creating a beautiful memorial and not rush the process. The group is using input from the public to, through community surveys and meetings. They plan on calling for artists in the next two or three months. A West Virginia man who was sent threatening emails to Dr. Anthony Fauci and others will be spending time behind bars. Thomas Canali Jr. is sentenced to 33, sorry, 37 months in the federal prison. According to his plea deal, Canali admitted to, to sending emails where he threatened to harm, where he threatened to harm or kill Fauci and his family due to Fauci's stance on COVID-19. Among the other officials, Canale also admitted to sending similar threats to include Dr. Ant, uh, excuse me, Dr. Francis Collins, who, the, who was the director of the National Institute of Health at the time. Canale will have to serve three years of supervised release after his prison term expires. A major economic package addressing health care, climate change, and taxes appears to be closer to becoming law. Amy Kiley previews tomorrow's planned Senate vote on the Inflation Reduction Act. We expect to vote on the motion to proceed to the reconciliation legislation on Saturday. That little sentence is big news. It means the Senate will likely pass a major economic package tomorrow. Democratic Senator Kristen Sinema announced last night she'd support the bill that should let it pass even without any Republican votes, then head to the House next week. The Inflation Reduction Act lowers prescription drug prices, lowers health insurance premiums, invest in clean energy that will create jobs and economic opportunity. Plenty of Republicans say they see inflation as a problem. I think voters come November will be very focused on the cost of gasoline and groceries and, and, and rent. They're just not convinced the bill does much about high prices. It would make inflation worse over the next two years and they do nothing to cut inflation in the long term. Economists have differing opinions on whether the bill lives up to its name, but the measure does appear to be the country's most significant climate change legislation to date. Rein in certain prescription drug prices and impose a minimum 15% tax on big corporations. That last item is designed to chip away at the deficit. The rich people don't call all the shots on how we write tax laws. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. It's hard to decipher exactly what the bill says until the Senate parliamentarian signs off on recent changes. Democrats need her approval to avoid a filibuster and pass the measure with reconciliation. U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi wraps up her tour of Asia today with a stop in Japan. Pelosi met with her Japanese counterpart, Lower House of Parliament Speaker Hiroyuki Husoda in Tokyo. It followed her press conference today in which she discussed the impact of her historic visit in Taiwan. Pelosi is expected to hear back to the U.S. later in the day. Thunderstorms pounding the East Coast today are causing more than 1,000 U.S. flight cancellations. Among the most affected airports are LaGuardia in New York, Reagan National in Washington, D.C., and Newark Liberty International in New Jersey. More than 1,200 flights were canceled nationwide yesterday the most down flights in a single day over the past six weeks. These weather issues are another problem for the airline industry, which is already dealing with low staffing and air, control, air traffic control delays. 
A new report reveals all the jobs lost during the pandemic have been replaced. What these numbers mean for the U.S. economy, that story is still ahead. Will this rain, rain go away or will it come back another day? Find out in my full weather forecast. On America Outdoors. When you think of wild spaces in America, where does your mind go? I'm on the edge of the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness. As I take in the scenery around me, I start to see how wilderness isn't just a place. It's a feeling. Tuesday at 9 on WOUB. This is life in an African wild dog family. Endless mouths to feed and a gaggle of teenagers to control. Two parents must keep everyone safe in an unforgiving wilderness. These woodlands are full of lions, the dog's mortal enemy. They compete for the same food, and their war is never-ending. Wednesday at 8 on WOUB. On country music, Vietnam divides America. Rednecks, hippies. Anti-Vietnam, pro-Vietnam. Bob Dylan meets Johnny Cash. Dylan and Dad together, that was an explosion. And Chris Christopherson comes to Nashville. Chris Christopherson is probably the best songwriter to compare Chris with Gershwin or anybody else. When country music continues. Thursday at 9 on WOUB. WOUB is recognizing members of our Cornerstone Society. The Cornerstone Society is a group that wants to ensure the future of public media in our region. It includes people across our area who value news, entertainment, and cultural programming, as well as the educational services WOUB provides. Also included are graduates of Ohio University who took part in the WOUB Student Professional Development Program. Thanks to the Cornerstone Society for their generous support. To learn how you can be involved, email WOUB at WOUB.org. We are currently in a flood watch for part of southeastern Ohio and most of northern West Virginia. If you've paid attention to the news, these floods have been ravaging Kentucky and West Virginia. Right now in Athens, we have a high of 84 and a low of 68. Today we had a 70% chance of showers. And I don't know about you, but if you go outside, you probably felt some precipitation. Look here, we have these storms coming in from the southwest, rising through Athens to the northeast, right along the Ohio River. And if we look at the local radar, we see that this is happening all around us, and there's lots of clouds. So I bet if you didn't see any precipitation, there's a good chance you saw some clouds. And as these storms pass through, we're going to see fog come in and possibly some flight restrictions and delays. And focusing right here, we have rain going on now, but looking ahead, there's a cold front that's coming through that may bring some showers into the rest of our late week. Tonight in Athens, we have an overnight low of 68 and a 50% chance of thunderstorms. These thunderstorms are going to be sporadic, but you may hear some th thunder tonight. Looking ahead to tomorrow, tomorrow's high 84 in Athens with a low of 69. Storms again are likely with a 70% chance of storms. I consider myself optimistic. I don't know about you, but you should grab an umbrella on standby just in case. Now, this weekend is not the weekend to have fun in the sun. Instead, we're going to see showers for hours. I already touched on Saturday and Sunday, but if we look ahead to Monday, or Sunday and Monday, Sunday we have a high of 87 and a low of 70 with a 50% chance of showers. Same with Monday, 50%, high 86 low 69. These showers are not going away anytime soon. Looking ahead to the weekdays, Monday again 68, low of 69 with 50% chance of showers. Tuesday, these showers are continuing 80%, high of 82 and a low of 67. But as we go into Wednesday, you can see that 80, per, 80 degrees is our high. These showers are bringing in colder temperatures with a low of 63. And as you go over here, Thursday, high of, 60, high of 83 and a low of 65. But look at that. The sun is shining through the clouds. It's going to be mostly sunny, leading into a Friday that's going to be 81 degrees, super sunny, with a low of 55. This is going to be a great day to take your family and friends out. Enjoy the outsides with this great temperature. 
And also, the temperature is going to get really low at night, so you can kick off that AC, open some windows, and save some money. Thank you. Back to the desk. Thanks for the insight, Ethan. A report revealed today that the U.S. economy added more than 500,000 jobs in July. It wipes away all job losses that the U.S. incurred during the pandemic. But the positive numbers come at a time when record inflation is hitting Americans' wallets. Chris Wen takes a look at the latest job numbers and what could that this could mean for the overall economic outlook. The latest employment snapshot is surprising economists and giving the Biden administration something to celebrate. We saw people hiring at record numbers, not record numbers, but at big numbers. Data released Friday by the Bureau of Labor Statistics shows the U.S. economy has now regained all jobs lost during the COVID-19 pandemic after a blowout jobs report showed a gain of 528,000 jobs. If we were in a recession, companies would be laying people off rather than hiring them. Some analysts are cautiously optimistic and say it's important to put these figures in perspective. Eventually, we're going to run out of bodies. You can't have an unemployment rate be at the 53-year low and keep adding 500,000 jobs a month. There just aren't enough people. At 3.5%, the July jobless rate matched the half-century low last seen in February 2020. President Biden taking a victory lap, crediting his economic policies for the encouraging numbers, but acknowledging there's more work to do. I know it's hard to feel good about job creation when you already have a job and you're dealing with rising prices, food and gas, and so much more. Administration officials say they'll continue their work on bringing the cost down. Whether it's through releasing uh, oil reserves, whether it's working on this Inflation Reduction Act, working with companies to bring more people out, we're doing everything we can to bring these inflationary pressures on you down so you have more money in your pocket. In Washington, I'm Chris Wynn reporting. Coming up in sports, how one local high school football team is entering the new season with a win-now mentality. That story when Newswatch returns. Diana was so relatable. Utterly charming. She had to claw her way towards the person that she wanted to be. Yeah, I'm only trying to highlight a problem that's going on all around the world. Diana had an unconditional love that is extraordinarily rare. Love purely for the sake of love. I'm not a political figure. I am a humanitarian figure. And always have been and always will be. In Afghanistan, the Taliban's crackdown on women. None of these stories are getting out. The Taliban beat anyone caught filming something they don't like. Undercover, correspondent Ramita Navai finds those who have been punished by the regime. We covered some cases of women who were in prison. They were being held without charge. And the defiant voices fighting back. These women say they're risking their lives just by being here. Premieres Tuesday, August 9th, 10, 9 central, only on PBS on America Outdoors. When you think of wild spaces in America, where does your mind go? I'm on the edge of the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness. As I take in the scenery around me, I start to see how wilderness isn't just a place. It's a feeling. Tuesday at 9 on WOUB. This is life in an African wild dog family. Endless mouths to feed and a gaggle of teenagers to control. Two parents must keep everyone safe in an unforgiving wilderness. These woodlands are full of lions, the dog's mortal enemy. They compete for the same food and their war is never ending. Wednesday at 8 on WOUB. The Notre Dame Titans look to recapture the energy they had a season ago and take the next step to a conference crown. Newswatch reporter Aiden Crowley was in Portsmouth to see how the Titans prepare for a Southern Ohio Conference title run. The Notre Dame Titans are ready to kick off the 2022 campaign. And with Dominic Sparks as one of the four All-State players returning for Notre Dame, a Southern Ohio Conference title is well within grasp. I think this is the best shot we have of doing it. And I'm excited. Everybody clap it up when they get here. Sparks is looking to lead the Titans as they look to avenge their two in-conference losses to Sims Valley and Northwest. Those teams are the final hurdle in the way of a championship, and Sparks says they have them circled on their calendar. 
Yeah, we're excited. We got, we really got a bad taste in our mouths. We, and I think we have we have a really good shot this year because everybody's hung, everybody's hungry. They, we want to beat them so bad. In some years, the hunger to win isn't enough. Because of their school size, Notre Dame struggles with consistency because of a lack of depth on the bench from year to year. Head coach Bob Ashley described each season as a feast or famine. He says this season the Titans have a full plate. Yeah, we're real excited. You know, we've got uh, I think nine starters on offense returning and uh, seven on defense. So we only lost three seniors last year. With a seasoned team, the Titans hope the sweat they're putting in now will pay off with big wins this season. For Newswatch, I'm Aiden Crowley. Import. The Notre Dame Titans begin their quest for a conference title in two weeks against Cincinnati Hills Christian Academy. Ohio football wraps up its first week of training camp with the season less than a month away. Curtis Rourke enters his second season looking to improve, and offensive coordinator Scott Ishfording says he, like, he likes what he sees. Specifically for Curtis, uh, I don't know that I've coached a more talented thrower of the football. Um, and, and we've seen some greatness from him. But at the same time, we need Curtis to make a step, no doubt. Ishfording says he's excited about Rourke's growth, but he says the door is still open for quarterback C.J. Harris and UCF transfer Parker Navarro to grab that QB1 spot before week one. The Ohio basketball team is in action for three games in Barcelona. Basketball, the Bobcats took on Spain Select basketball earlier today where they lost 75 to 68. Freshman A.J. Brown led the scoring for Ohio with 10 points. Dwight Wilson III and Gabe Wisnitzer snagged six boards each. The Bobcats have a rematch against the same Spain Select team Monday in Madrid. The National Football League is still appealing to Sean Watson's six game suspension. Commissioner Roger Goodell announced yesterday that former New Jersey Attorney General Peter C. Harvey would hear the league's appeal. Harvey served as the New Jersey's Attorney General from 2003 to 2006. And guys, talking about Ohio basketball, it's exciting to see them back this summer. I'm really looking forward to seeing what they bring for us this season. Absolutely, I agree, uh, Jack. I'm mostly excited to see Dwight Wilson back on the floor, uh, mo injured mostly last year, so it's nice to see him back. I can't wait to see how he develops from his injury and if he's grown as a player. Yeah, I'm also super excited to see them get back in action, but what's even cooler is that they get to play in Spain. Thanks, Jack. An international rock star of classical music, Gustavo Dudamel, is leading a group of musicians ages 18 to 26 who could someday takes the seats in orchestras around the world. With his wife, Maria Valverde, Dudamel started the Encuntras or Encounters program through their foundation in 2018, bringing young players together. For the program's first time in the U.S., this year's group counts more than 100 music musicians from 22 countries, from Venezuela to Scotland to Japan. The com camaraderie is especially important after pandemic isolation when music schools and concert halls went silent for an extended period. Now to Ethan for a final look at your weather. Tonight we're going to have an uh, overnight low of 68 degrees with some scattered th thunderstorms. And moving on to tomorrow, we're looking at a high of 84 with a low of 69 with some storms. And all week, your rain barrels are going to be happy because it's going to be raining. Thank you, guys. And that does it for our broadcast this evening. Thanks for watching. I'm Max Brunke. And for Ethan Levingston and Jack Demler, I'm Maria Manessi. Newswatch will return September 12th after break, but stay tuned for the PBS NewsHour coming up next. And remember, you can find the latest news anytime at wob.org. Have a great night. Support comes from Snyder Stroh Jarrett Financial in Athens, providing investment and retirement planning assistance to Southeast Ohio for over 50 years. Snyder Stroh Jarrett, not just another financial firm. More information at ssj.finance.